In this video, we're going to take a look at finding functions. So we're finding functions here using integration. Now let's just say we start with dy by dx. So dy by dx is equal to 2x. So if we integrate here with respect to x, in that case we'd get y equals, and we'd add 1 to the power, divide by that new power, and we'd get y equals x squared. Okay? But this isn't all because we don't have any limits on the integration, so we need our constant of integration. So we'd have to get x squared plus c. Okay? Now, the issue with this is there's an infinite number of options we could have here for plus c. Okay, we might have, in this case, so these are all sketches of something of the form of this here, so y equals x squared plus c. So this top one here, this is y equals x squared plus 3. This one here, this is y equals x squared minus 3. And this bottom one here, this is y equals x squared minus 8. Okay, so this is the issue. There's an infinite number of options we can have here. However, if we do have a point on the curve that we know, in that case, then we can actually find the function. Okay, so what we do here is we integrate. We get something of this form here, y equals x squared plus c. We substitute our point in, and from there, then we can find c. Okay, so let's just take a look at a couple of examples. I think it becomes easier to understand once we just work through an example. Okay, so let's start with the first question here. What we've got is the curve c with equation y equals f of x. And it passes through this point. Now we're given f prime of x here. So this is essentially our dy by dx. So we've got 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. And we want to find the equation of the curve c. So what we've got here is our dy by dx, our f prime of x. And we've got this point here for which... Um, or this point here that lies on the curve C with equation y equals f of x. So what we're going to do here is just start by integrating f prime of x. So we're going to integrate 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 with respect to x. So let's start by doing that. So 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 with respect to x. Well, nice and straightforward. Let's just go term by term here. So add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So what we're going to get here is x cubed, because that would be 3x cubed over 3, so we get x cubed. This would be minus 4x squared over 2, so that would be minus 2x squared. And this plus 1 here is just a constant. So when we integrate with respect to x, we just get plus x. Okay. Now we have no limits on the integral here, so don't forget our constant of integration here, plus c. Okay. So we now know the point that lies on this curve, okay? We have this coordinate here, 1, minus 4. So what I'm going to do now is substitute this into my equation here. So what we've actually got here now is f of x, okay? So this is f of x. So in that case, when x is 1, f of x is equal to minus 4, okay? So let's just substitute that in here. So um, I'm going to get 1 cubed. So we get 1 cubed minus 2 lots of 1 squared plus 1 plus c and this is all equal to minus 4 okay because y is equal to f of x okay so if we evaluate this here now well 1 cubed is 1 1 squared is 1 so minus 2 lots of 1 is minus 2 plus 1 plus c is equal to minus 4 and all we have to do here now is we just solve for c. So 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 2 is 0. So what I get then is we just get that c is equal to minus 4. And in that case then we can now write the function here f of x. So we said that f of x was x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus c. But we know that c is equal to minus 4. So therefore what we do here to finish is we just rewrite our function f of x. So f of x here is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus x and then minus 4. Okay, replacing our c here with the value we found for c. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to the first question. Hopefully not too challenging. Now let's take a look at one more here to finish with. Um, we're only going to do two for this video because it is quite... Um, I don't want to say straightforward, but the questions don't really change too much in what they might ask. Okay, the only way it really changes is rather than using, like we saw with the previous question, f of x, f prime of x, 
they might use dy by dx and you know they might actually give y in terms of x that's the only way it really changes so what i've got here is dy by dx which we can see is given here and we're also given this point here so y is equal to 43 at x equals 4. we just want to find y in terms of x so again we just start by integrating dy by dx to get y so we're going to integrate this equation here so integrating 5x root x minus 2x okay and this is all with respect to x okay now to make life easier here let's change this root x to be x to the power of a half so what i've actually got then is 5x times x to the power of a half just making sure your laws of indices are you know um in good order here this should be hopefully quite straightforward so it's going to be 5x to the power of 1 when we times we add the powers so what i'm going to get then is 5x to the 3 over 2 okay because this is the same as 2 over 2 so 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2 gives me 3 over 2 okay so what i'm actually integrating here now is 5x to the 3 over 2 minus 2x okay with respect to x so again we just go term by term here should hopefully um, be nice and straightforward so add one to the power divide by the new power so if i add one to this power here so that's three over two plus one so that's the same again as two over two so i'm going to get five x to the power of five over two and then we divide by this new power here so we divide by five over two minus two x so add one to the power divide by the new power and i'm going to get minus x squared there okay so minus x squared so let's simplify this part here so if we're dividing by 5 over 2 that's the same as times in by 2 fifths okay so i take the 2 on top times it by 5 and then divide by the 5 here so that'd be the same as 10x to the power of 5 over 2 so that's the same as 10x to the 5 over 2 over 5 and then minus x squared and we can simplify this one more time we have 2x to the 5 over 2 minus x squared and let's not forget the concept of integration here plus c and plus c because we have no limit so obviously we need our constant of integration from here now we just need to use this point here that we're given so we've got x is 4 and y is 43 okay so we're going to substitute that into our um, result here Feel free to use a calculator. Um, you don't need to um, because this is quite a nice power to work with. So I get two lots of four to the five over two minus x squared here, so minus four squared plus c, and this should all be equal to y here. So this should be all equal to 43. Okay, because what we found here is y. So y is equal to this expression. Simplify all of this here. So 4 to the power of 5 over 2, let's just evaluate that here. That's the same as taking the square root of 4, so the square root of 4, and then raising that to the power of 5. So in other words, that's the same as 2 to the power of 5, which is 32. So I get 2 lots of 32 there, minus 16 plus c should be equal to 43. So 2 lots of 32, that's 64. Minus 16 plus C is equal to 43. Um, let's keep going. So 64 minus 16, that's 48. Um, we're in that room a little bit. Let's finish it over here. So 64 minus 16 is 48. We get C plus 48 is equal to 43. So therefore, C is equal to 43 minus 48, giving us minus 5 there. Okay. So that's c so all we need to do now is give y in terms of x with our value of c so let's just clear a bit of room at the top here just so we can give our solution let's just clear this work in here do the same underneath so now let's give our solution here so therefore y is equal so that's 2x to the power of 5 over 2 2x to the power of 5 over 2 um, minus x squared and then plus c but we know c is minus 5 so minus 5 there okay 
And there we have it, that's our solution. We can't simplify our terms any further. The only reason it says that is because we had this 10x to the 5 over 2 over 5. That was technically correct. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not in its simplest form. Okay, so that's why we did that here. And there we have it, so that's our solution to that question. And that brings us to the end of this video on finding functions. In the next video, we're going to take a look at finding areas using integration.